Welcome to my messy life. Take my hand and dive right on in with me. It's gonna be all right. Messy and perfect life with Lee. This is Man and Matthews. Hi, guys. I find her incredibly hilarious, a little bit goofy, kind of sexy, really sexy. Ooh. Yeah, girl. Get and it. you just got married. Yeah, like a week ago. Oh my gosh, how was it? It was a dream. It was a dream. It was beautiful. It went really well. Did somebody do it for you, like a sponsor or something? Because you have a lot of kind of sponsors. There was actually a few sponsors. Who? Um, well, like no one paid for the wedding, right? I mean, my dad did, but um, like I got things for trade, if that makes sense. Like if I were to put like for the dresses, Allure Bridal gave me two dresses and that was awesome because then I didn't have to pay for a dress and then I had you know got did to you have with... to return them after you kept no them? I got to keep them oh nice yeah I had three dresses on my wedding and you changed three times <laughs> yeah I changed three times so the first dress was coming down the aisle and saying your vows yes the ceremony dress that was the first one yeah which I think was my favorite okay which is very darling and then the second one was like hey we're here in the reception we're gonna eat and watch some toasts and that was a pink fun Sex in the City type one. I don't oh, know I why. Oh, I think I but saw it, that yeah, one. Yeah, for some reason that one felt really like, that was the one that I didn't expect to like. I just tried on for fun and then I was like, well, this is fun. Yeah, and you're this. a fun gal. Yeah, I'm fun. You gotta rock the fun girl. <laughs> <laughs> and then the third one was really just so simple and fun to dance in and I loved the look of it. It was really like off the shoulder, more on the tight, simple side. Do no, people do that? Have three? Dresses? No, no, no. No, I've never heard of thing. that. No, no. They, I was just gifted them. Yes. So I thought, well, when else am I going to wear these? Yeah. I'll just wear, you know, because we have photographers and yeah, and why not? So you went into the reception with the pink Sex in the City one, and then when <laughs> did you change into the dance one? After you heard the toast, you ran in and changed. Yeah, I did. Did you have a team? <laughs> I had two girls help me in the bathroom that I didn't know. And I'm not comfortable naked in front of people. Like, Why? that's not. Oh, just because that's what my mom, like, my mom was always like, oh, don't look. And so it, I thought you had to be, like, self-conscious. Oh, my gosh. And so. I always am naked with my kids. And Eve's like, mom, please. I'm like, look at my grown-up bosoms. These are grown-ass oh, women I bosoms. I wish uh, you were my mom. <laughs> I do that all the time. Am I old enough to be your mom? My mom still does that. She, she does. still will be like. I'm just going to go over here and um, just <laughs> just don't look. And so it's made me really self-conscious. Like, yeah. like girlfriends would, I would like go over and they would just like take their shirt off. And I'm like, what are you doing? Are you one, either you're hitting on me or two, like, I always you're trying that. to like, I don't want to look like it just scared me. You always think people are hitting on you. Well, yeah. A <laughs> and <Me> B. Too. <laughs> Did you say you too? Yeah. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I think when you're filled with joy and you're happy and you look people in the eye, they mistake that it's for the romantic eye gaze. love. Yeah. But I look in people's eyes and they're like, yeah. she must want me. She, she, I want her oh, because she sees me. Here's what I get mistaken. I look at people and they think I want them. Does that make sense? That makes sense. I look at people and, and listen yeah. in their eyeballs. Mm -hmm. I'm up in there and then they're like, Wow, she's really giving me that. Yeah, should we? Me. Should we go out? And I'm or like, oh. I think actually they feel good when they talk to me. Yeah. And they that can easily be mistaken for attraction. Yeah. Well, it's a connection for sure. Yeah. Eye gazing. Yeah. <gasps> We're soul doing gazing. it now. Yeah. I know what soul gazing is. Oh my gosh. We should soul gaze for 30 seconds at some point before you During go. the this uh, conversation. Yes. I tried to, you know who Neil Flynn is? No. He was in a show called The Middle. He was the dad and then he was the, the janitor in scrubs okay so he is like almost 60 and he came on my podcast and he's very set in his ways and he and i'm like come vision board with me that will never happen no <laughs> you know everything i say i forgot the point what were we just talking about? soul gazing oh my gosh i said well will you just soul gaze with me and he's like what are you talking about now and i leaned forward and took his hands and he looked he's like this is just rubbish I mean, he couldn't yeah. even, but anyway, I tried, I tried, I Murph, my husband. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. First of all, his name, what's his full name? <sighs> Stephen Murphy. Stephen Murphy. Where is he from? Scotland. Oh my gosh. He speaks with an accent, right? Yeah. Born in Scotland, grew up in New Zealand and then lived the last nine years in Australia. <gasps> so he has a mutt 
All accent. three of those are kind <laughs> of the same. <laughs> they are. And he has like... He, Manly. Yeah, he doesn't sound quite Australian, but not quite New Zealand. And like he has a mutt accent. He has a really rugged... He is hot. He's so hot. He's so hot. Are you so I happy? D- I don't. <laughs> he doesn't know it. It doesn't under. I don't get it. Well, that's what He's makes like, it well, even my hotter. Mom, my mother said I was handsome, but I always just thought just that's just because she loved me. Actually, she's not. That sounds British, huh? No, I don't know what I don't that know what that like. was. Well, I'm always like, you're really hot. He's like, <laughs> like he, do- he doesn't get it. <laughs> that's kind of nice. He's new to L.A., so he doesn't know how hot he is. Uh, he's you know, hot. like everyone is hot in L.A., but like, mm. but he's extra hot because he's present, right? He's hot because he's manly. Yeah. Like even his beard and his m- mustache beard area. Is that called mustache and beard? I guess. If it's one big piece. I think it's just, yeah, beard. His beard. Because um, no one would have a beard, but not a mustache. That would look really <laughs> no, strange. Sorry, the Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Did he just have a beard? Abe? Ooh, he didn't have a stash? I think it was just a bat here. So he just shaved. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's not a good look. So he has, your husband has a mustache and beard. And a beard. Um, but when I saw him in a photo with you before we ran into each other at that spiritual place, uh-huh. um, I saw a photo and I thought he was this actor. There's an actor who looks like him, who has like a little bit of a broken nose and he's just a wild man, like plays like a... Like Hugh Jackman or... Or Gerard Butler? No, neither of Tom them. Selleck. <laughs> it's definitely Tom Selleck. He reminds me so much of Tom Selleck. Now, not when he was young, a Magnum PI. Yeah. No. No. Oh, he gets I can't that. Re- he actually gets that. Oh, no, 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 no. No. No, I'll have okay. to find out who it is. It's like a scavenger who is a really badass. And he he's knows, big. he does look like an actor. You look at him, you're like, oh, you're an actor. And then, but. What does he do? He, I mean, he's an actor. <laughs> <laughs> So he is an actor. <laughs> well, he's just starting his journey. Yeah, in the last. Oh, you it's know, so exciting! He was a miner, a coal miner. For I knew it a was something time. dirty and something smudgy dirty, and dangerous. Manly. Yeah, risking his life on a daily basis from four a.m. <gasps> to four p.m. Hot. Two weeks at a time, one week off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know if that's hot. That well, really it was. Tiring. I don't know why he. I mean, that's what he was doing. Yeah. So to fu- to have had him come all the way over to America now to be like, I think I do want to act is a really good decision for him, I think. Yeah. Even though I, I would I tell so most too. people don't act, just stop it. He, I would be like, yeah, do it. So he is really engaging and attractive. He's very attractive. So he, um, he's in some of your videos now, right? Yeah. You used to always have a really cute guy in the passenger seat with a beard as well. Travis. Yeah. You're my best friend. Oh, it is? He's my best friend. Oh. He gave a great speech at the wedding. Oh, that brought so us all the sweet. tears. You should do it for a living for sure. Yeah. My my husband Dave does that. He gets up and says the most beautiful things to people at um at their weddings or birthday parties. It's it's magical. Aww. He's good at that shit. It's yeah, they speak from the heart. That's yeah. where it's at. I I read my vows on a paper and I I'm always someone that speaks off the cuff improvisation, but I just got scared that I wouldn't say what I really wanted to say. And so I did my best to kind of read off the paper, but then, you know, really the feel him. And yeah. I kind of regret just not saying I love you or whatever. Took the paper stuff. It's like, How long was the paper? I know. It wasn't that long. I mean. But I really like agree, th- 40 too. 40 seconds. That your heart or your message or the knowing in that moment what you want him to know is so important that if you just went off the heart and you were nervous, you couldn't remember. Which you would have been. I would have hate to look back and be like, oh, I forgot to say yes. that like you have my trust and honesty and I will give you yeah. my love for as long as. <laughs> Is that what you said? More or less. I just, I had talk, told him that I knew he was the one the minute I saw him and that I loved him and that he has my, he has, he can count on honesty and presence and mm. love and communication with me. I'll tell you what, those are the most powerful communication, number one, because the second we want something and we're waiting for them to get it and they don't, we store a little resentment in our head and that shit just builds up. And then it comes out at a different time that makes no sense. Right. (laughs) That's right. I always say like you have a filing cap, you have a uh, folder and you put papers in it and one day it just explodes and goes everywhere. You're like, 
What? Are there yeah. too many papers to pick up? Are and we I, done? Yeah. And there's there's so much there. I think I'm really good at communicating what's going on. And I, I am for the most part. I'll be like, you know, something's coming up. Is I've learned to ask, is now a good time rather than just ambushing them with my feelings? Yeah. Um, but uh, we're practicing how to That's so hold great. the space for each other and let it like not judge, not make each other wrong for feeling what we feel. Cause oh. for a long time I felt wrong for feeling certain things. Yeah. And then it would add all the shame and guilt, which is completely unnecessary and adds way more pain. I love the perspective that we attract someone. We fall in love with them. We're attracted to them. So we get in it and then they start pushing our buttons or pushing the places that hurt inside. They trigger us only so we can heal. So that's the kind of what relationships are about. Marriages are about. You're going to get triggered, but you know there's a deep love and it's a safe place to hurt, to scream, mm-hmm. to yell, to talk through it, to heal it, yeah, and to let it go. And that's when marriage is magic. Yeah. I think once that kind of stops or somebody's not playing the other part or doing their, you know, engaging... Mm-hmm. it's over but if you ha- if you're communicating and getting triggered and not going you make me feel you yeah. go oh wow thank you for letting me hurt right now because i need to go within and heal some shit right cuz anything that disturbs our peace is an unresolved issue that's right? right so if i'm upset about something how could it possibly be his fault yeah he just got here i've been on the planet for this long this was here before he got yeah. here yeah and now is an opportune time to reveal it in a safe place of love to heal yes. it. Yes. That's so magic. It's so beautiful. That's when marriage is beautiful, even when it's rocky. Yeah. Because you're owning your shit and learning. Move that microphone around, girl. <laughs> I want you to I mean, they're not, if they're, is this. Can anyone see Manon's face? Because this is. I look like the hunchback. Notary. I wish I could be like this. So anyway, but then I can't see you, Lee. Mm-mm. By the way, I didn't know this was going to be. Um, Live? Video. Yeah. So I just got here from uh she wanted training mate. Everyone Murph to just know. started working at training mate. Your boyfriend? Yeah. My boyfriend. I forgot you got married <laughs> last week. Well, that was just last week, wasn't I, it? Yeah, well, it's crazy is I never ever called him my boyfriend. I started calling him my husband the day I met him. Oh so I would call people and I'd be like, Oh, I met my husband. So I'd always be like, My cut my husband's gonna come see me. I ne- boyfriend feels really strange. You know what? He was never I wish I mean that's this, kind of exciting. This, boyfriend. Yes. He's my boyfriend. Now he's my boyfriend. The second I met Dave, I knew it was my husband. And oh. I called him. I couldn't remember his name because I don't remember yeah, people's I names. Yeah, I remember his name. I couldn't remember. So I went to work in the morning and I said, I met my husband on the plane last night. And so I was just like, my husband this, my husband that. Oh, my God, I met my husband. And then the girl answered the phone. She was, Lee, it's your husband at work. Oh, my God. His name's Dave. And then I was like, hi, Dave. Yeah, but I knew it was my husband. And I was 31. Wow. I love that. I'm 30. 30? Oh my gosh, you were around the same age. Yeah, I, ju- I think I, think just, I turned- just turned 29. So I was a year older. It was the same thing because his his name's Stephen Murphy, but people kept calling him Murph. Murph is so cute. Yeah, Murph's adorable. And that fits him way more than Stephen. Yeah. And I, but I wasn't sure what his name was. So when people were like, I had a friend that was like, what's his name? I'm like, I don't, I can't be bothered to know his name. Something with like a it's, pet name. It's my husband. That's what it is. I know. I'm not good with names and I've let go even feeling bad about it because I see people yeah, and I never forget their face and names are just like a label. We've it's just gotten. words. Who but needs them? People are really attached to their name and their self-worth is attached to their name. So if I say, Hey, and they're like, you can't remember my name. I'm like, no, I can't. We've met five times. I'm like, all right. Nothing to do with you. It's just, yes. I don't, I'm a person that doesn't remember names. I, that's just how I roll. I, I'm better at remembering people's names now because because I know how it feels when I hear my name. Yeah. Because I am attached to my name a little bit. Like yeah. it, I'm like, oh, I hear it. And I go, that's me. Yeah. And when someone remembers my name, it makes me feel so good. So now I'm like, well, I want to make them feel good. So how can I remember their name? And I imagine a name tag that does, says their name. It will not work for me. You don't know. Okay. I've tried a lot of things. But, you- but what I've done is I now just say, hi, friend. And I look him in the eyeball. I say that to almost everyone except my kids. And then I mix their names up. Yeah. I'm like, Eve. And she's like, I'm Audrey. I'm like, so what? There is no Eve. <laughs> <laughs> There's no one here named Eve. Okay. So I, I like a little bit of the story of how we are. We, we had three major different intersections together. Wait. 
Okay, so Pretty Funny Women. No, start with Daily Grill. Oh, Daily Grill. Yeah, I worked at Daily Grill in Studio City. And you, you well, came in with Dave. Yeah, so Dave and I used to go to Daily Grill before he would do one of his shows, his improv shows or whatever. And Where and would he do improv? Where? Yeah. He, he, like stand-up kind of thing? Well, he's the master at improv. He's like one of the best there is. That's so cool. Yeah, it's really great. So he did improv in Chicago. Second, Second City. City. And That's he was where on I started SNL. too. He was on SNL. He was on SNL one year with Will Ferrell's first year. <sighs> That's so cool. And then he got fired because he, he... he's not great at the politics or whatever. So hmm. Lauren Michaels had mentioned, you know, I really want you to be pivotal in turning the show around this year. And Dave took it to heart. So he's like, nope, we're not doing that. Nope. I mean, he was thinking he was creating the stuff <laughs> and it stepped on a lot of toes. Yeah. And he lasted a season, but was kick ass because he moved here. And then he flew, he moved here in October and he flew to Kansas City in December. And I met him in December coming because that's where I'm from. Kansas City, like my mama. She is? Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. I didn't either. I yeah. mean, I knew well, you I didn't knew. know that you were. Oh, her? <laughs> I was like, did you just. I knew where my mom. <laughs> Um, I don't know where my mom's from. Well, what was interesting is you came, then we took a class together, Pretty Funny Women, right? Did I say, oh, Dave, you're yes. a, I'm a fan of yours? No, we then, were in Pretty Funny Women. And no, I, but how did I know? How did I know? Did we actually meet at Daily Grill? Well, we would talk because you would, were waiting on us. Uh, you would come up and we'd order and chit chat, whatever. So we get into years later, yeah. I don't know how many years. We go into, I just wanted to take a stand-up class and I walk in and she's here, but I don't recognize Manon from the Daily Grill and she's in the class. She's like, I've met you. I've met you. This is what happened. I don't oh know God, if it's, this is so not how I remember the story. Well, I make things up so you oh, can correct okay. it, but here's what, my, <laughs> here's what my memory is. I got up and said my name and did you know my thing and then you did your thing and whatever. And then after you were like, I met you. Here's what you said to me. We were walking out. You go, I used to be a waitress at the Daily Grill and I used to see you guys come in all the time. Yeah. And I, I thought, what a lovely couple. I hope I get to have that one day. Oh, you said something that's like really that. nice. I think that sounds accurate. And then I was like, oh, that's so sweet. So we had that kind of exchange. Then we kind of went our separate ways again. Did you keep doing stand up? I did it for about a year, a year and a yeah. half. And you know what? One of my favorite places is to be on stage with a spotlight and a microphone. It's not to try and remember something funny to try and make someone laugh. So I like what I'm doing now, which is speaking the wisdom of my soul with my bite, with my humor. So maybe you can help me start my podcast. Oh, I'm, I would. I'm terrified. I, oh, I'm I like, would. no one cares. They've all heard me before. Who's heard me? No one's heard me. Oh, no. But that's the voice that the comes in. The stories that we tell ourselves to paralyze us and miss out on our lives. Yeah, I need help with that. Oh, I'll help you, baby girl. Okay. 100%. Yes. Well, basically, my help will be no tolerance for the voice. Tell it to fuck off. And we'll just push record with a producer and you'll start doing it. Okay. Because that's it. Yeah. Yeah, because you seem really aligned with your purpose and you follow your joy. It's inspiring. And then our third interaction. Yeah. Is that where you're going to go to next? Yeah. After our second one was what? the, the, the So church? then I go to, um, <laughs> I'm going to the spiritual church. That's, it sounds like Scientology, but it's not it? though. I know I always have to say that. What's like church called? of religious science. And it's basically the science of the mind and how powerful your mind is. Yeah. And when you reprogram your brain from, I can't do this. I suck. I'm unworthy to, I can do this. I'm fantastic. I'm worthy. Um, I'm listening. I don't really react because it, then it would take away from the live aspect when it, they watch it on the you. YouTube. Yeah, it would be distracting. Yeah, but I'll talk to those people. After. Did they rename it to the YouTubes? Well, I like the YouTubes. <laughs> I like the YouTubes. Okay, so I have. To I had a psychic two days ago say you need to do YouTube, and I'm like, well, I guess I, I kind of do. You're like, I already rule one freaking <laughs> platform. Why do I have to go anywhere else? Well, you know what's crazy is I've been resistant. Of, I've been resisting YouTube for like years, like, because I just, I'm like, because uh, I have judgment around it. And it's just like, just do it. Because that's oh, actually judgment. where the money is. Yeah, oh, okay. First of all, guys, Man and Matthews, if you go on Instagram, if you want to go on right now and look at her Instagram page, it is fiery, hilarious, sexy, outrageous, ridiculous. 
That's what you see? Yeah. Oh, what a gift. That's what I see. <laughs> but you. it's so ridiculous, but it's it's refreshing because it doesn't have to be anything. It can just be you shrugging your shoulders in a weird way to music. Yeah. And it's like you're moving your body and there's music. So it's kind of fantastic. I think it's magical. Oh, I wish I had you in my head rather than me in my head. Okay, so guys, she has when you were on Vine, you had 3 million followers. Yeah. And I saw some weird number that said something like 140 billion loops. Yes. I don't know where that statistic came from. I think someone wrote it up, but it that actually, it did say that in the upright corner, it would show you the amount of loops that you got on your videos. And it was like, yeah, some, how it, did well, you they're become, only six seconds. So it, yeah, it got up to a billion, I guess. How did you become a Vine star? I was doing stand up, right? So I took that class that you took a few years before then um, and started getting on stage. I did Second City as well. So I was doing improv at the time and I guess thought, you know, I want to be in funny movies and TV show. I want to star in a sitcom. How do I do that? Well, I guess I'll just do some stand up. Right. And then um, then I got on this app Vine and I was just enjoying watching it. Like it was easy to watch and started making videos on there just for fun. Definitely didn't know anything about getting a following. Like that wasn't a possibility back then. Right. Like now it's like, that's a, I guess a goal. Well, for that's people. a goal. Yeah. It's like I got, I got it. Back get a then following. you were just kicking it. Yeah. There was no pressure to, to get a following. And then someone commented and I still need to find this person and thank them, but someone commented and said, Hey, I saw you do your Kristen Stewart impression at the comedy store. Can you, put a vine of that and I'm like oh yeah sure and I was literally on my way out of the house and I put on a hat and I did a I was like hey Kristen Stewart what's your favorite ice cream flavor and then I did my Kristen Stewart impression oh (laughs) wait and it already just you putting your chin out a little bit (laughs) it's so good do it um (laughs) wait I don't what I I I, I don't know what I'm, I'm gonna be Charlie's angel first of all her being in that movie Charlie's Angels I get I have feelings about it probably because I deep down wish it were me. Yeah. I always don't like actresses where I know I could do it and I'm not doing it. So yeah. I'm always a little mad at them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm glad that you can get there quicker too. Cause it's like, it comes across as like, Oh, I just don't like them. And it's like, well, no, you're jealous. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I did that impression. And then overnight it was like 10,000 followers. And then in a week it was a hundred thousand. And then in a month it was half a million and then got up to 3 million, but I was wow. consistent. I kept making videos and it was so much fun. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. It it's, really is. You know, because you're in your full on using all of your gifts, your mm-hmm. improv, your stand up, your creativity, your body, you know, all of it. Video filming. I grew up making videos and editing and all that fun stuff. And so it brought back that fun because I, you know, I went, went to high school and college and I wasn't really I was always filming, though. It's interesting. Even with like a big camcorder, I was always filming. So that's the fact that, that I'm doing that now is is crazy. And I was noticing when I was reading your little bio um, that Alicia typed up for me, it said uh, Second City, The Groundlings and UCB. Yes. I did Second City and The Groundlings. You would be great on there. I did, when did you do that? <clears throat> Which... I, I did um, The Groundlings before I met Dave and I got to level three. And then the next one's four, I think, in the final one. But they said that they always make people repeat one yeah. so they can get more money and all that. Oh. That's what I heard. So I did really great in that level three. And they I said I had to repeat it. I was like, fuck this. And I left. Oh. Then then I met Dave and I started at Improv Olympic. Mm. And I did that, all of the things, and got on the improv team and did that. And then I got pregnant. And then and you all stopped? broke loose. Oh, <laughs> I stopped. But after I had my first, I did a one woman show, which was fun. Oh, yeah, it was fantastic. Okay. I need your brain because you do all the things that I want to do. I know. It, something it, happened. I, something shifted in, in me where I felt like I had all this drive and I was like, going for it. I'm going to do everything. And then something it's almost like because it's like I, I, I love numbers and I look at numbers and that's how I see. And so I, I'm worried that I'm comparing everything to that 3 million and then everything's falling short because the number isn't high enough. And it's, I'm not looking at it. it, I mean, when I, on a good day, I can look at it and be like, oh, it's such a gift that I even have any followers, but that's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because it's fun. But sometimes 
social media you get gets sucked in into my it. Head. Yeah. So people say with my podcast, I just started doing it. And people are like, how many viewers do you have? How many followers? I go, I have no earthly idea because I know I'm just to do this. Yeah. And organically, it's going to become what it's going to become. And the people are going to be attracted to me who are supposed to be here. But I'm done worrying. I'm done trying. I'm done going up hills and banging on doors. I only do what's in line with why I'm here, which is to shine my light. How did you become done? Um, I became done when I was running like a chicken with my head cut off, wanting to, I, I knew I had something. I had a vision when I was young that I was in, a, in front of, a, when I was 25, I was getting money out to buy cocaine <laughs> and to go party with my friend Stuart Heising at El Coyote. And I put my bank card in and I had this vision as if I was watching a movie or it was actually happening. And I was on stage with thousands of people, like in a stadium or a theater. And I had a Janet Jackson microphone on. And I was jumping to music and walking around looking. And I was like, oh, my gosh. But then it stopped. I got my money out. And I was like, I wonder what I'm going to be. Because that was so real. I could feel it that that's coming. Yeah. And I forgot about it, you know, and went about my business. And every once in a while, it would pop back. And I remember the first time I spoke in Aspen at the Lead with Love conference, there was like 200 people and she put this microphone thing on me. I go, is this the moment that I had when I was 25? Is it happening now? And I go, the crowd is only like a, a, this big compared to what I was in front of. But that, that Janet Jackson one was too big for my head. It was wobbling. So I just had a handheld or a lapel. I go, okay, this is not it. But what I realized is it's coming. Yeah. Like I'm building to it. And I've let go anymore of how is it coming? Or when is it coming? I'm just enjoying myself. Yeah. And preparing for it every day. That's amazing. Yeah. And back then I used to pound on doors and pitch reality shows and pitch them. And that's when I almost sold one that I was going to be starring in. And it was ridiculous. And I thought, this isn't what I want to be known for. I'm so much more than this silly idea that I just frantically got in with some production company. And then the guy passed, that like head of the network passed. And I was so relieved and I thought, I'm not doing a damn thing until I know who I am and why I'm on the planet. And I ended up at University of Santa Monica. I love that. Yeah. I've wanted to go there, but oh, it's good. I shift back from going, hey, am I, am I here to uh, spread love and spirituality in that kind of direction? Or am I supposed to keep doing comedy? Both. <laughs> Which is the same. Both. Because you know what I figured? I'm scared I'm going to lose my like drive to make people laugh. No, you can do both. So you can... Put uh, a little something, or you could get your comedy one and your spiritual one. I don't know. Here's for me: I was getting more and more evolved, and more and more spiritual, and more more uh, deep connection to who I truly am, which we all are, powerful beyond measure, and directly linked to all that is right. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm getting more and more like that, but still, I want to cuss, do a high kick drop an F-bomb and do the splits yeah, and drink a martini or two, you know? And so I was like, those don't fit together. I've got to drop that side. And then really I said a prayer. I was like, God, how am I going to teach like Marianne Williamson and still be human and crazy like I am? Yeah. Like, how do I, how do I blend that? You know, whatever. It was kind of like, what, who, which one do I go with? And whatever the word was, I can't remember. I'm going to pretend it's blend, but it was a word that that I just heard back, blend, blend it. Don't change a thing. Be all of who you are. Be all of who I created you to be. And I realized in that, that Eckhart Tolle and Deepak Chopra and Marianne are up here and they're all kind of whispering, you know, like, you know, Eckhart Tolle is so good. I can barely hear He it. cracks me up. I can barely hear what he's saying. I, and then Deepak Chopra talks so, so cosmic, people can't understand sometimes. But I was like, oh, I'm the bridge between them and the people who might not even know they care about spirituality. So I like that. And then I can say fuck. And then I can do my splits. And then I can have my cocktail saying, we are here to be human and learn and love and have a damn good time. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I want to know something because I'll just gab with girl gab with you all day. But, you know, I got a hit. I like that presentation. Of the deep lunge forward, mouth open, drop in. Mm. Very beautifully, physically, nut eating. 
I want to know something. Do you want to move your body a little bit right now? A little bit. I always want to move my body. Do you want to kind of move it forward like you do when you do your videos and your, you can push your microphone? Okay, what the hell were you... Oh, no, I got to stay on task <laughs> before. But remind me after this to talk about Tony Robbins. Oh, but not have yet. you done it yet? No. Okay. But oh, why was I on stage dancing? Like yes, <laughs> I love it so much. Then I was mad at you because I should have been doing that oh, too. Oh, of course. I was like, oh, my ass is getting up there. I can't wait yeah. to move. Well, we have to get there first then. Oh, well, we've got to wait on that. We'll go together. And then, yeah, they love me now. Anytime I go to an event, they're like, okay, come on. Because they want dance me dance routine. Yeah. Well, it's not a routine. I know. It's your free forming girl. I know. <laughs> Five, six, seven. A pop, pop, snap. Is that? Ooh, ooh. I know. <laughs> I saw it. It's okay. the best moment of my life. Wait, before we get there, because we're going there. Okay. I have to just get into. What's messy? Mess. Because I love it so much. And it teaches us the most about who we are and why we're here. I want to hear messiness from you. One thing. Well, you just saw it. You. you just saw the peanuts. Yeah, I kind of. I think. I mean, I have a bunch of messy things, right? Um, I just saw well, what were you pointing well, at? Well, me eating during your because that felt like it was more important. <laughs> mess. That, that, <laughs> reaching for comfort. Here's you, what the messy is. What, babe? I would say. For well, I I don't know if it ties into um, how do I even want to start already? It's messy, right? Uh, What's messy that turned into something good? Is that what you're asking? What would you learn? I think all mess shows up to teach us something. Can you think of something that was messy that you learned something from and you're using it now? Yeah. Kind of as a knowledge or a force for good for you or the world. Yeah. I mean, I was pretty impatient as a kid. Pretty, like very impatient, instant gratification, all or nothing mentality. So I used to kind of like, especially with food. I should start with that. My first addiction was sugar. And so what was messy was that, I guess, overeating, eating my feelings, connecting food to, you know, if I had a feeling when I was a kid, it was my mom being like, oh, she's just hungry. And so I'd eat. And then I wired those two things together and it would get to the point what where- What two things did you wear together? Um, food and feelings. Okay. Like, oh, if I'm having a feeling, I got to eat something. It's not just like, oh, feel the feeling. Let's just feel it. What is it? What it, it just, because once you feel it, right, it leaves your body and yeah, then it's Yeah, it can done. pass through. <laughs> yeah. It's the resistance to feeling that causes actual more pain and discomfort. And I guess, you know, that kind of journey where it felt like, you know, I could get away with it when I was a kid because I was like skinny and, and fit and I have good genes. And so it didn't really show up as like an issue, even though inside I felt like this is not OK. Like, I feel like I eat more than everybody at the table. I feel like I'm obsessing about how much I'm getting and, and, and I have to get more than every like it just felt like this very messy. Right. Like it didn't look good. It was it didn't feel healthy. It felt like outweighed. And it led into my college years and early 20s to to where it got to the point, right, in which it shifted into this is an issue, hitting Did you a go bottom. Into bulimia? No. That was common in my dorm and all that. <sighs> no, I mean Were you heavy yet? Or no? I did gain gain some weight in college. Um I never had an issue with under eating. It was always a uh, an overconsumption type thing yeah, that, I had that had with alcohol as well. And um, did you get into drinking in college? Uh huh. Oh yeah. I loved it. I did too. Loved drinking. It's so fun. It's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun. It t- quiets that chatter. It's so fun. The to- brain can be a yeah. really dangerous, not nice place at the unconscious level. Oh yeah. And you know, our minds it's like so screw anything us so that bad. shuts that off. It's like please, like get. I felt connected to source with drinking, and so, and I got that same comfort with food too. It's just like oh, okay, cool. I can just like calm down because in this world we don't. I don't. I didn't feel enough. I didn't feel like I had enough. I felt like I was gonna lose what I had. So it was just like fear based thinking. I guess. Where did your feeling of not enough come from? Not being enough. Was it from attention from your parents or maybe do you have siblings? No. Uh, yeah, I have a, uh, I grew up as an only child. Okay. 
I have a half older sister who lives in Kansas. How in the hell could they not pay attention when there was just you? They did. They paid way too much attention. Oh. And so if I did something good, it was like amazing. And if I did something that was just like not great, it was really suffocating and really like this isn't good. And so it was too much attention. It wasn't, yeah. there was no relaxing. Freedom. No yeah. freedom. No. And I struggle with that today. I struggle with thinking that my freedom, freedom's being threatened. And so I, I would get in relationships and then I'd be like, I got to get out of here. And, yeah. blah, blah, blah. and so the fact that I'm even married today is a miracle. It, sh- it really shows me that like, oh, things are different or my, I had a psychic done. shift. Yeah. So that messiness of like eating and drinking and, and ah, just wanting to escape led to um, you know, I guess a bottom to where I got really into Marianne Williamson, self-help. Mm. Um, I, I got certified in neurolinguistic programming twice. Became NLP? A mas- yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, I'm obsessed with it. Oh my God. Yeah. It changed everything. That. Changed my whole life. That changed my whole life along with everything I just named. Yeah. I'm obsessed with like, oh, I'll do I'll try landmark insight seminars, 12 step programs, Marianne, Will- like reading book. Like I've been re- reading spiritual literature for as long as I can remember. I don't even read me either. Like, like that's all I care about. Me too. It's, it's just crazy. About feeding that mm-hmm. longing. Longing is a really good word. Really untethered and unleashed. Yeah. And completely connected to mm-hmm. my power which is God. Yeah. I had uh, no sense of God, really. Like I, I didn't have, I mean, we prayed over, we are, I wasn't really religious growing up and I know we prayed over our food, but I didn't know what I was praying to. And so yeah. I, I didn't have any sort of connection to source energy. I thought I was running the ship and that was a lot of pressure, right? Cause that's how I, it felt and occurred to me as a child. Um, I love that so much. I just want to pause on that yeah. because it's so beautiful. It's like when you think you're in charge of your life, it's hard as hell and it's overwhelming and it's almost too much. Like it is. Everything's a big deal. But when you realize there's a flow, regardless of how you react to it, that's going and you can lay down and ride it and it can be with grace and ease and things can come to you in a relaxed, beautiful way. It's unfrickin' believable when you get there. Yeah, when when I when we remember that we're like this big and there's eight billion of us, like how could we possibly have that much power over? At least uh, for me, the biggest thing was other people's feelings. I, I I think I felt very responsible. Like if my dad was upset, I'm like, oh, it's my fault. I'm not enough. That's where that not enough yeah came in. Is like if I if I were enough, my parents would be happy. And I've done enough yeah. to know that like, well, no, what if they were not that thrilled even before I got here? And what if only I brought them joy? Like that's the story yeah. I'm now telling myself is I bring the world joy, or at least I'm trying to on a daily basis, just tell myself a different narrative, right? And that's essentially what a lot of NLP is, is getting at that unconscious level where all those behaviors are set. And, and had I not, you know, had the extremism mentality growing up, I wouldn't have been interested. I wouldn't have hit a bottom to where I go, this has to change. Yeah. Right. Like no one just changes for fun. It's like they almost have to feel enough pain to feel propelled to go. Yeah. This is, I am done. What there's gotta be something else. And then I got, you know, went into this journey of all this spirituality and definitely got interested in the, in the mind and the unconscious mind and how we make pictures and, and what do we say to ourselves and how language drives our behavior. And if we are yelling at a, if we're yelling at a kid who's running a race and we're going, come on, you can do it. They're going to like run with their chest up. And if you're like, just stop, what are you doing? The kid will get defeated in a second going, wait, what? You know, am I? Yeah, I suck. Yeah. Like literally it's so powerful. And And so, and it just, even breaks my heart for our younger selves Mm -hmm. to think of young man and watching her parents unhappy thinking I suck yeah if I was better they would be happy but in our six and seven eight-year-old brains that's all we can think yeah and then that damn thought I I call it a pebble that we create from that pattern that we're witnessing trying to make sense of it that thought from a seven-year-old brain gets put here and then it eventually seeps down to the middle of our mind and every single thing we see that appears in front of us is through the lens of I'm not enough or I wasn't good enough. Yep. And so then 
something beautiful could be here, but all we can see is they didn't look at me very long. They walked right past without saying, oh, right. I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Right. You know, when we're really, having the, our dreams come true. Yeah. Like getting 3 million followers, getting married, buying a house, and still waking up going, what am I doing? That's what happened to me this morning. And I'm like, are you kidding me? What, what else has to happen in order for me to feel like I'm enough or that I've done enough? And it, it's crazy because I've done so much work on myself. I've done, and it's, it, it, it shows it's how like powerful the crazy is. loop in our brain is. It is. And I have to like actively write out a gratitude list, go on a power walk, call someone, ask them how they're doing to get out of my head. 100%. When I am at my best, which I'm not doing right now, just a little <laughs> tiny bit. When I'm at my best, I have a spiritual routine that doesn't take a lot of time but it's in the morning and it grounds my ass so deeply that I can step out of bed and, and, and welcome all the shit that's coming good and bad. Yeah. It's gotta be in the morning. But when I jump up and go, I'm discombobulated and I'm reactive and I'm so human. That it's exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy too. Cause our, the ego mind will say, I don't have time to meditate right now. Like I don't have time to like I don't have 20 minutes to just sit with, you know, God or whatever when it's like, actually, that gives you so much more time in the day. Yeah. And that ego wants us. It and wants to win. So it's going to do everything it can to actually keep, to keep us, us from, from our seat. greatness. Yeah. From who we truly are. Which yeah. Is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Um, so your 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 mess was that just going through that thing, not feeling enough and putting in alcohol and food. Yeah. To try to fix it. To try and, and fix cope. it or quiet it or numb it or yes. distract it. Mm-hmm. And then you said that kind of your breaking point was after college. Um, yeah, it was like, it was like relationship after relationship, but some voice you got tired. I got, yeah, I was very tired at 23 years old. <laughs> I was like, I'm 23. Why am I what, what is this? Like what, what I just hit this. I just didn't like, I didn't feel present in my life at yeah. all. I was like, something has to change. And you've always had, uh, I've always had, I feel, I'm feeling like you did as well as some awareness that I've never just been in life 100%. Meaning I wasn't aware, like, why did I do that? What's going on? Uh, since I was little, like I was very aware, like, ah, oh, I just bothered all of those people with that comment. That's weird. Yeah. You know, just a lot, a lot of people awareness. don't have that, I think. No, no. And I think that's it is when, when you get down on your knees, the people who don't have it stay on their knees and go into a depression. Mm. I'll get on my knees and feel the hurt and then go, okay, what is my learning from this? Yeah. Someone must have taught you that. Why did this show up? I don't really know. I think I got so tired like you when I was doing drugs and making out with everyone and yeah, making out with everyone. Heart. That was my thing too, man. I was making out. And I wasn't even aware of it. I was like, I don't remember doing any of that. I don't know what you're talking about. And they're like, <laughs> you're in a relationship. And I felt so bad, but I was like, I can't help it. No, I was never in a relationship. I was just making out. And I was like, always Can in I get your number? I'm like, no, sorry. I got to blow like the wind. I guess, I guess that I want to kiss you, but that doesn't mean we're going to. I want to make out with you, but yeah. I will never see you again. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but I remember when I got on my knees, uh, right before I met Dave, I was spent, I was done. I was tired. And I was like, what's happening? And that's when I went to God. I think every time I do that, that I wear myself out so hard that I can open, then I get the blessings. It's the desperate. It's that desperate feeling of, of like the willingness to go to any length, like the, to really feel but to be open to receive yeah, and be you're vulnerable. Not, we don't get there if we're not in enough pain. Unfortunately, yeah. it takes being like, I can't, I don't want to, this can't last another second that I'll be willing to do something else. And yeah. that something else is like the gateway and the door to yes. this amazing life. Amazing. Right? And when I get in my head, I'm right back there in my unworthiness. And then when I say, I did it a couple weekends ago, I was spinning stories in my head. And finally on Sunday, I was like, all right, cut the shit ego or, or loop what or negative thought take a break negative thought there's a there's a, a thing called a negative thought cleanse i guess it's so interesting because i just did this a couple of weeks ago too where it's like you go seven days without any negative thinking and if you find that you've been in it for like an hour or something like that you have to start the seven days over which is like not engaging if anyone says anything negative you just like bless this you don't like engage with it and if you if you do your 
to catch the negative thought and to just switch it immediately. Just like, just like don't. So it's giving real awareness to, because negative thoughts, we have 60,000 yeah. thoughts a day and 92% of them are negative. And they're the same thoughts we had, we had yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that so crazy? Yeah, we're all, most people are living from those thoughts. Yeah. That's how you, like, somebody's like, are you mad at me? I'm like, no, why? Well, you didn't return my call and this and that. And they, they started spinning. Oh, people think I'm so mad at them because I'm not much of a texter. And so if someone texts and I write one word just to get the point across, like, I, I want a phone call or like a FaceTime. Yeah. Great. Because like you, I look at you and I feel, yeah. they're like, oh, there she is, the warmth. But through text, forget about it. I don't know why I said that. Well, no, I was just thinking that reminded me of when you say I always remember people's names. It makes them feel mm. better. When I text, I would just go, what time are you coming? You're right. And I haven't talked to them for three days, but I know they're coming that day. And I have found that people got hurt from yeah. that. So what I do now is I type what I want. Then I go back up to the top and said, hey, how are you? I was just thinking about you. I'm so excited to see you today. Then I can hit send. That's lovely. Because people need the back rub they first. They do. They really or do. Or else you have to navigate a lot of mad people. Or sometimes I really don't give a shit. Yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm like, well, that's on them to think I'm mad. I'm not. Well, that's interesting too, is my kids will say, you make me so mad. And I say to them every time they hate it, no one can make you feel anything. That is your, that's on you. That's your choice, how you choose to respond. So if I yell at you or if I'm irrational or whatever, which I'm sure I never am. <laughs> Did you watch the Brene Brown thing? No. She talks about that, like getting clear on your story and kind of coming to the people that you love and saying, you know, uh, I've created a story that, you know, you're mad at me or whatever. And then it's like you take I just took responsibility for creating that. Yeah. And then I can get clear. You know, you might respond going, oh, I'm not. I just love you. And I go, oh, well, now I was vulnerable enough to share my story that I made up. And when I share it in that way of like I created this it puts it on me so the other per person can actually hear me and not feel like attacked. Like, yeah, like you're mad at me, aren't you? Or like, I feel like you're mad at me. Even that is like, well, y yeah, it's like a way of communication. That's so funny. Cause the, the thing that I talked about a couple of weeks ago when I was spinning in a story, everyone ended up going to um, the beach on the 4th of July. And I used to go to that, but in the last few years, kind of with my relationship and everything that was going on here, I stopped going to that and then all of a sudden Dave and I are taking a break right now and it was my first that vacation like every holiday is new without him here in, in my house or part of my and I'm like what did I used to do today like I don't remember what to do and then I looked and everyone was there so I got mad at the person who a long time ago started it but she's not in charge of anyone but I was feeling so alone and lost. Mm. And then I saw these people and I thought, why are you excluding me? And my unworthiness kicked in and I started spinning on mm. that. And then I reached out to her like, why in the hell wouldn't you this and that? And this, that. She's like, what are you talking about? Like I, anyone can come. It was, I was like, but everyone came but me. Like everyone else heard about it, but I was already out of the game. Right. But I got triggered because I felt so vulnerable and alone rather than being like, I'm feeling lonely. I really want to be there. I'm afraid that I'm not welcome or whatever that, yeah. that step would. Just, and then she could go, oh, happy to come on by. And then you're there. But we're so. But I don't even know. before that, I'm hurting. I'm going to go inside and right. give myself a little bit of love. Mm. But instead, I projected it onto someone else, put it's a couple of mean text messages like what the fuck. And um, then two days later, I said to her, I was really struggling and feeling lost and alone. And that was a way for me to get it out on you. So I just want to apologize for that. That's nice that you apologized. Yeah. So I did that kind of what you're saying with Brene Brown of owning it, you know? Yeah. You didn't do anything wrong. You went with your family and had fun with a lot of other people. Yeah. And I perceived it because I was hurting that I was excluded. Yeah. Hopefully I wasn't. <laughs> you know, who knows? But if I am, whatever. Well, yeah, we're the, I guess, the creator of our own life. Like if I'm not, so, I can easily do that, especially with social media. I'll like look at people's lives and I'm like, why am I looking at this, these people's lives? This is just a distraction from my own life. I, that's what I'm bumping up against lately is like, I feel like I'm, I distract myself from myself and my own creativity. Yeah. And you know what I do on social media? I post and go. So I put my post up and go. 
And then I'm being told I need to go at least an hour a day to comment back to the people who comment on oh, that's things amazing. to build my audience. But I don't look around. But some people got mad at me. I'm not following you anymore because you never like my stuff. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. That's, yeah, that's I'm not. just posting and going. I'll like your stuff if, if you tell me that's important to you. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's true. That's great. I'm practicing that. I, I don't, I actually, I muted. <laughs> Do you know about the mute? What? You can just mute people meaning you still follow them, but you don't watch their things. I, oh, that's I've, nice. I've done that quite a bit. I have trouble with compare to spare. So I'm I not think, somebody that's yeah. on my phone all the time, but when I do go on, there are days where I find that I just reach for it extra. Oh, and I'm I like, what too. is this? Like, I don't, this I do is too. such a, and then I'm not present in my life. And that the point of creation is in the present. And if I'm watching somebody else's we're present, we're missing our life. Mine? Yeah. 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 But it is true, you know. I always post pretty cute pictures or positive messages. And people are always like, you have the best life ever. You know, and last year I had the worst year of my life and people were like, I uh, couldn't tell on social media. Yeah. So oh, yeah. People that, only post the good stuff. Yeah, well, I want to post the cute picture. I don't want to go, oh my God, I can't stop crying. I posted a, a, a post, I want to say a few months ago. And I said, hey, I'm, it was like a cute picture. But the caption was, I'm struggling right now. I'm going to take a few days off. I'm feeling a lot of com compared despair and self-esteem or whatever. And it actually got the most likes out of most of my stuff. Well, wait a second. If you have a, a million <laughs> followers, what does that look like? How many likes would you get on your most liked post? You know, I have half a million on Instagram. It's over half. Okay. Well. Anything over 500,000, I think is 1 million. No, it's not. Okay, well, oh that my was God, just that's my a great. Off, I off, wish off. I thought that way. I basically have I'm a million. I'm blocking my face. Um, I know, right? Ugh. Um, well, or how many likes? My most, I don't know. I think you're supposed to have like such a strong following that you get strong likes. Yeah, no, it, I engagement. have like a little following and very few likes. That would be yes. Yeah, so in my comparison, enga head. yeah, en engagement is what people. Yeah. is where it's really at because you could have a million followers but if no one's engaging with your stuff it's not really going to matter yeah and a lot of my followers i mean i'm getting some new ones lately um my romantic ones posts do pretty well what like the romantic posts with like murph at our wedding oh, that i noticed yeah. that those did really well but like or like a selfie does better than yeah me being at a cool spot yeah, I like posted that. like a quote that I wrote with a little picture, you know, with a graphic and it got like a hundred and then my cute daughters with me got 400. Yeah. It's so interesting, right? Yeah. But I also think Instagram does something with them. Like there's yeah. times where I'm like, this should have done well. But it, like right that one post where I was like, I'm just taking some time off because I'm having a hard time. That I didn't think would do well, but it did because I think I actually do think people like yeah, I do relating. Those. I do those too. And I always, because this is messy, right? This podcast is, my life is, I'm sure your life is, even with our thoughts, it makes it messy. So I like to share from that because that's relatable. You know, people can connect and see themselves and, and feel not alone. And then I can give a little learning or nugget from it. So I, I enjoy the mess. And now I try when I get kicked in the stomach and fall to the ground, I try and take some deep breaths and stand up faster and get to the learning instead of staying in the victim mode. Oh, that's great. It's nice. How do you stand up faster? I go, oh, I got kicked in the stomach. And here's actually what I say to myself. Some good shit's coming. Some big ass learning is coming because that hurt. And then I breathe it. I feel the pain of it. And then I choose not to suffer after. So I feel the pain, but I let it go. Like you were saying earlier, let it move through you. Feel it, sit in it, cry. You know, I have an Apple Watch and uh, it's ringing and that's distracting to me. <laughs> I thought you were going to relate it back. I thought you were going to say, my Apple Watch reminds me to cry. No, my Apple Watch is trying to distract me like my cell phone does. I got an Apple Watch and I had it for a week and returned it. I don't know how to use it. I kind of liked it. I get we. I got at the time I was weird about money, and I was like, "Well, I just you know, four hundred dollars a month." 
And you're making money, right? It's crazy. I just bought a house and I'm worried about an Apple Watch. I know. I, so you're I'm making changed. money now, right? Yeah. I've been making money with sponsored posts for like five years. Five years. And do you have to have a, an amount of people that sponsor you? Like, do you, can you have a hundred or do you just go with five because you don't want to be a pig? What do you mean? I mean, like if like 10, 100 sponsors came, will you take our watch? Will you take our hat? Will you take our shoes? Will you take well, our that never suntan happens. lotion? Yeah. So that doesn't happen. It's more of like I have a social media manager who says, you know, Pringles wants to you to make a video for them and then I'll do that. It's not oh. necessarily like, here, wear this. Oh, sometimes, sometimes people will send me packages and I'll be like, oh, that's cute. I'll post that on my story or whatever. But I'm kind of excited because I just got one. Those blue boxes over there. I thought they were equipment, but I think that's the company that wants me to, to do something. That's awesome. No, I was kind of happy. So how did they email you? They emailed me. <laughs> <laughs> they emailed me. I didn't read <laughs> I don't know why that was so funny. I was like, yes, they did. And I didn't read it just like you didn't read the email I sent you. No, I have issues. But it, anyway, that's the I'm other excited. thing. How do I get myself to read? Like, even if it is just an email. I don't know. I can't help you with that. Yeah. If like it's I, important I, to you, you it. will. If it is, you won't. Right. Maybe is that what it is? So, but this was important to me. What? What? Oh, this one? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think you had a, you weren't pulled for a sense of urgency. Oh, you know what happens? What? This is exactly what happens. Cause if I go for my NLP brain, I'll go, okay, so what did you tell yourself when you're about to read? For me, if I have an email, what happens often is I go, okay, I'll respond later. And then I never respond later. So I miss it. Oh, I do that too. I have to respond in the moment to text message or I will never respond. Yeah. As soon Maybe as if I, I touch say, it, if done. I don't respond now, I'll never respond. <laughs> And then I please remind me to respond later because I'm not <laughs> going to now. So, yeah, whatever we got to do. But I think when things are important, like I'll have 100 emails and that person I wanted to hear from or I'm expecting some information. I go in there and I don't look at the rest. Yeah. Prioritizing. Yeah. But what did you say? Prioritizing. Yeah. You just said it weird. Like you're yeah, trying to figure it out as you said it. Prioritizing. 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 What, um, what do you want to plug? What do you have? What are you doing? What do you want people to come see? What do you want them to buy? Um, let me think about that. Uh, well, I guess follow me on my channels, right? So, so Manon Matthews. With one in Manon. Yeah. Like Manon. M-A-N-O-N. Math- Manon now forever. Matthews with one. Murph. One T. Matthews with one T. Yeah. And if you like spirituality, then you can follow me on Manifestation. That's my other Instagram. Oh, I, I, that's what I said. You should have one for spiritual and one I for do. funny. I do. Yeah. I thought you said that because you. No, I didn't wow. know. I did. That know. one's I just kind of started. Uh, yeah. Like six months ago. And then I have a Facebook with funny stuff on it. Man and Matthews. And then I guess I have a YouTube as well. Um, you know what's coming up? Oh, I've shows. Oh yeah, I'm, I perform live. So you're doing stand up? Yeah. Like a stand up variety show, so there's video, I do characters and then I end on stand up. Dude. Yeah. That's Carol Burnett shit right there. It's so fun. Oh my gosh, I want to come see it. Yeah. Is it in LA anytime soon? Maybe. The Laugh Factory woman. That's So where are your shows coming up, up in different con- yeah. countries? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right now it'll be August 7th in Belmore, New York. Belmore, New York. And then August 8th in Mar- Timonium, Maryland. Maryland. And then Chicago, September 13th and 14th. Kick ass. Where in Chicago? Yeah, that's a good question. Okay, great. Just look at my website. Look okay? at our website, manandmatthews.com. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Under shows. That's where the shows are. And I would like to say, subscribe to this podcast. Yes. By golly. It's a good one. Thank you, man. I like Messy and Perfect. I love that. I do too. I love it it's so much. It's such a good much. message. And you know what else? It's start things when it's not ready. Don't wait till anything's perfect. Just start doing it and let it be whatever the frick it is. Yeah. Not some thought what we think it should be, just whatever it is. And then you have freedom. You don't have to be perfect or look perfect or... I mean, I do right now, but you, yeah, don't, you look perfect. I'm perfect. 
notes. Yeah. Um, also, subscribe to this podcast and come to my workshop. When's your workshop? Did you come last no, time? No, I was at, I was, uh, I think I was out of town. Come. It's October 18 through 20 here on Supple Vita and uh, <laughs> Supple Vita <laughs> and Ventura Boulevard at some hotel. I can't remember the name of it. I right wish now. it was sooner. So, uh, October 18 for 20, buy tickets. Come. I promise there will be magic and crying and laughter. I'll probably be there because that's around my birthday. And I want you to be to there. Come. I would like that. Might even ask you to speak. <gasps> Oh my God. I would, would you love like to. I would love that. Um, okay. So I said I might. Just a might. Just yeah. a maybe. Re- Don't will you remind me after this is over? Yeah. Okay, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, Manon, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I I'm loved so it. happy that we kept being brought back together. There's a reason. Right? I like it. I can't wait to dance with you on Tony Robbins stage, yes. but I'm going to have to say, don't get in your head freestyle. I know she's going to move a little different than you, but remember you got the higher kicks and the splits. That's, I don't have the splits. I know I do. Yeah. So I'm going to watch you wiggle, You've your, already... wiggling, wiggle your body a tiny bit right now, please. Just stand up and just do, can you stand up and do it? What? Just stand up like you do a little bit when you're getting crazy and loose. <laughs> You guys are going to have to watch this on YouTube. I love that when you flip your hair around that. Did you take dance or you're just free for a minute? I danced in my bedroom for two hours a day in high school, but I, and I took a hip hop dance class in college, but I really, I, I really didn't take the dance. rest is just free form. Yeah. I just watched like music videos in my I bedroom do that too. Very unusual dances. Sometimes I make myself giggle. Yeah. I don't think it could ever be like real. I mean, it's got to be real. It's got to be real. Yeah, it's got to be real. Okay, I love you. Let's. I love you.